the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my faith. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Now the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Good morning, Dr. Kildare. Good morning, Molly. What are you doing here in Dr. Gillespie's outer office? Where's Nosy Parker? It's her day off. Well, you were supposed to be the head nurse around here. Somebody has to look after Dr. Gillespie. Oh, uh, you going in to see him now? Yes, he wants me to look at a patient with him. Take a good look at him, will you? He doesn't look very well to me this morning. Sure, I'll take a good look at him. Come in. Oh. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. It's you, huh? Were you expecting someone else? No, not really. But a man can always hope, can't he? Look, you invited me down here. I'm not forcing my way in, you know. How do you feel? Now, don't start in on me. Start what on you? Oh, that how do you feel routine. I've been getting that all morning. I feel fine. I never felt better. <coughs> I feel great. <coughs> I think I'll take your temperature. I don't need my temperature taken. Oh, these fledgling doctors that keep wanting to take temperatures all the time. And I've seen you in some bad humors, but you're really surpassing yourself this time. Oh, I feel fine. I feel fine, I tell you. All right, you feel fine. Now, who's the patient you want me to see? (coughs) He's in 303. His name is Warren Jackson. He was admitted last night. What's wrong with him? Well, that's what we got to find out. He attempted suicide. Oh. Oh. Slashed his wrist with a razor. Wife found him. Didn't do much damage, though. I want to know why he tried to commit suicide. He's newly married, apparently very happy. He's a successful insurance broker. There's no reason in the world for suicide. Was he sober? Completely. Yep. He should be waking by now. He's been under sedatives. Let's go and have a look. All right. Dr. Gillespie. I feel fine, just fine. Couldn't be feeling better. You feel fine. Well, you may feel just fine, but you look just lousy. I never look better either. You and Kildare are alarmist. That's what you are, Molly, alarmist. Nothing wrong with me at all. My color may be a little off. There's nothing wrong, though. I feel fine. Hey, your color is a little off at that. A man can't have any privacy in this hospital at all. We're going down to 303, Molly. Oh, Mrs. Warren Jackson just phoned. Mm. She's on her way over to the hospital. You told her to come at 10 o'clock. All right. If she gets back before we do, ask her to wait. Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah, thank you, Miss Bird. Come on, Jimmy. <coughs> ah, confound it. I do not have a cold. A man can sneeze, can't he? Who are you talking to? Talking to you. I didn't say a word. Well, maybe not orally. I could feel what you were thinking. Guilty conscience. Now, get this through your head. You've got a head. I am not sick. And no matter what you and Molly Bird do to me, you're not going to make me sick. Any more than you do already. Why, Dr. Lennon Gillespie. <laughs> oh, fiddly. My colleague, Dr. Kildare. How do you do, Doctor? Very happy to meet you, Mr. Jackson. And how do you feel? Oh, too bad I bungled the job. Ah, well, 
naturally, I can't agree with you there. Your wife is on her way over. We had quite a job getting her to go home last night, and she only went when we persuaded her that you were out of danger. I don't want to see her. What? I don't want to see her, I said. Well, then, of course, you don't have to see her, Mr. Jackson. Now, Dr. Gillespie, shall I ask the nurse to bring a signal monitor? If you would, please. That's a frightening name for anything to have. <laughs> well, we just want to test your blood pressure. It'll be right here, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, while you take care of Mr. Jackson, perhaps I should speak to your 10 o'clock appointment. Oh, I'd appreciate it very much, Gillespie. I'll take care of it right away. <laughs> to say that my husband refuses to see me? He's very ill. He's not himself. Don't let yourself be hurt but by why? this. why? Why? Mrs. Jackson, have you any idea why your husband would wish to end his life? No, I, I haven't. Has he been ill? No. Not since our marriage. Before your marriage? Not that I know of. Oh, he told me he's had trouble with asthma and hay fever, but he, he never spoke of anything serious. I see. How about headaches? Has he complained of those? Well, yes, he, he has had some headaches, but he's been working very long hours. He, he works much too hard. Well, why did you ask that? Oh, Mrs. Jackson, I think your husband tried to end his life because of illness. I think it was that same illness that prompted him to refuse to see you this morning. But if you're ill and, and you love someone, you, you normally want them I by know. you. But your husband isn't normal right now. What's wrong with him? I don't know yet. I have a theory, but it's going to take some study. What did Jackson's test show? His blood pressure is very low, and his pulse is very weak. That's a sick boy, I know that. Oh, did you notice those rough spots on his skin? Yeah, 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 yeah. He kept scratching them. He told me that during the past week he'd fainted several times at the office. That he had difficulty in breathing. And then he'd get waves of nausea. And those could be symptoms of a lot of things. Of you know, the rough skin might indicate an allergy of some sort. Well, that was my thought, too. I think we'll proceed with the allergy test. Can't do any harm. Allergy illnesses have been known to provoke suicidal tendencies in patients before. Yeah. It's worth some investigation. <sighs> See, I'm tired. Must be almost lunchtime. Well, not for two hours. Now, you sit down in that chair. I'm going to take your temperature. No, you're not going to do any such thing. What's the matter? Afraid you'll have one? Oh, I'm not afraid I'll have one. I know, doggone well, I haven't got a temperature. I've just got sniffles. It's the change in the weather. Well, it won't take long to take your temperature. And oh, go and take your thermometer and eat it. Very well, if that's your attitude. Miss Bird. Yes, Dr. Kildare. You get Dr. Carew on the phone for me, please. What are you going to do? Just going to tell Dr. Carew that you don't look at all well and that you won't cooperate in the simple precautionary method of having your temperature. Ah, you're a tattletale. That's what you are. No. I'll bet you were a nasty little boy. Do I take the temperature or does Dr. Carew? Oh, go on ahead and take it if it'll make you feel any better. Oh, uh, <clears throat> may I, Doctor? Help yourself, Molly. Oh. Here you are, Dr. Gillespie. Close those pretty little pearls of yours on this. Gosh. What would you say about a famous diagnostician, Molly, who could diagnose everyone's ailments except his own? I'd say he wasn't as much of a diagnostician as he makes himself out to be. Mm, I'll see him. I'm not going to put up with all mm -hmm. this. Keep the lips gently closed and the thermometer under the tongue. Yeah. That's better. What do you think he's got, Dr. Kildare? If he's got what I think he might have, he's not going to be fit to live with. We'd better see if we can get him in another hospital. I've stood all I'm going uh, to. Uh, with... Lips closed, thermometer under the tongue. Well, what do you think he's got? Something worse than a cold? I'm not going to say until I see how he looks tomorrow, but I have a pretty good idea, and so does he. Simply won't admit it. Well, I think that thermometer should be just about cooked by now, so I'll take it out. Yes. You two think you're very funny. Gosh. Well, young fellow, you are hereby and officially ordered to bed. Let me see that thermometer. Well, I'll be a... Comes as a surprise, doesn't it? 
What do you know? Well, I did think I was feeling a uh, mite groggy. You sure you didn't have that thermometer under the hot water tap? You saw me shake it down. Molly, get a room for Dr. Gillespie. Um, isolation room. What? Uh, isolation room? You know why, don't you, Dr. Gillespie? Ah, you don't have that. I couldn't possibly have that. Why not? I'm too old, for one reason. You know your medical history well enough to know that men of 99 have come down with it. Say, would it be asking too much to ask what you two are talking about? Yeah, it certainly would. Besides, I don't have any outward signs to indicate... Ever had them? Oh, I must have. But you don't really know. No, I don't really know. Well, and we'll know better tomorrow. Uh, That's what you do have. You know yourself. We can't take any chances. Uh, splots. Double splots. Well, Mr. Jackson, Dr. Gillespie is ill, and if you don't mind, I'm taking over your case. Oh, I don't mind. It's about time I was getting out of here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Have you ever had any allergy tests? Oh, I had a few tests when I was treated for hay fever. I'd like to have you stay at the hospital a couple of days for a series of tests. You may be able to find out what the root of your trouble is. You don't have to put me through any tests to find that out, Dr. Kildare. The root of my trouble is the root of all evil, money. Mm-hmm. I see. You see, I, I've taken on quite a few extra responsibilities lately. New home, new car. I went in a little too deep, I guess. Been working late, trying to pick up some extra commissions, but haven't had too much luck. Mm-hmm. You're in love with your wife, aren't you? Very much. Well, then, how would you account for... Her? My trying suicides? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I got pretty depressed the other night. I've been feeling so rotten, and well, Ellen and I had a fight about money. I got to thinking that she'd be better off without me. My health seems to be completely shot. Don't scratch your face like that. You'll only make the rash worse. I'm going to order a shot of adrenaline for you. That'll relieve your discomfort. Now, look here, Mr. Jackson. I think I can help you. I'm convinced that your state of mind, though, as well as your health, is caused by an allergic condition. Will you give me a chance to find out? You mean, you really think you can fix me up? I'm going to do my best. Okay, Doc. But I guess you've got yourself a patient. Just as I thought. Uh, For your information, my temperature is 103. And I feel terrible. I can't chew and I can't swallow. Uh, I sure got a beautiful case of them, though. Never seen a better case in my life. When I get anything, I get it good. I suppose they know all over the hospital about it now. Must look like a perfect fool. Not at all. It just looks as though you had a perfect case of the mumps. Mumps? Blah. Isn't that shocking? Then I'll tell you something. They're not a bit unbecoming. Kildare, come closer and let me breathe on you. (laughs) I've had the mumps. You have. There's no justice in this world. There's no justice at all. Return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Now we continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare... And Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Good evening, Dr. Gillespie. How are the three of you this evening? Oh, you'll be sorry you asked that. When did I become a plural? I was referring to you and your two mumps. They're thriving. The swelling is spread to the submaxillary and sublingual glands beneath the jaw. Thank you, Doctor. Makes my work just that much easier. Yeah, it also keeps you from poking around my mumps. Has he been a good patient today, Molly? Has he been a good patient? Huh? 
Blair Hospital hasn't seen such a commotion since he got the German measles during the First World War. I'm a sick man, a sick, sick man. Well, now it's time for his throat application. You'll see how he acts. I don't want another hot strip of flannel around my throat. That's a lot of nonsense anyway. Go get it, Molly. Mm-hmm. Get it, Dr. Gilbert. I'm not going to have it. I know as much about medicine as you do, and I tell you, it's a lot of nonsense. It's your own prescription. What? I looked it up in your book. Uh, Every 20 to 30 minutes, put hot applications to the patient's throat, consisting of 5% guaiacol in glycerin to be rotated by 2% menthol in lamp. That's a pretty low trick, Gilder. A pretty low trick. Prying into a man's books when he isn't around to defend himself. Besides, I can't stand the smell of menthol. Here's the application. Put it on him. Okay. No! Oh, good. I swear I'll never prescribe this treatment to another human being in the world. My stomach hurts. It does? Molly, suppose we put hot applications on his tummy. Oh, no, get out of here. Let me die in peace. All right, then we'll dispense with the stomach treatment for the yeah. moment. But if you have any more trouble in that region, I've found several prescriptions of yours, old ones, that are real dilly. You will pay for this, Gilder. You'll pay for this when I get out of this bed. I know. That's why I got to get my licks in now. Uh, seriously, though, I'm sure you know how important it is for you to keep warm and quiet. We can kid about it all we want, but mumps can turn out to be very dangerous, and no one knows that better than you. Yes, teacher. Well, I'm going down. See Mr. Jackson now. Oh, how are his tests coming? Well, so far, all I've been able to discover is what he's not allergic to. He's been injected with dust, mold, pollen, animal hair, feathers, various medical drugs. He's been put on several different kinds of diets, and all the results have been negative. He hasn't improved any since he's been here, either. His eyes have become very puffy. Might be allergic to something in the hospital. Yes. Possibly you. Possibly. Except that he was having these attacks before he knew me. Mm. He's getting pyrobenzamine now. That's giving him some relief. Has the man been given anything externally that might affect him? Have you checked his toilet preparations, toothpaste and soap, shaving lotion? I'm doing that tonight. Mm. I'll be in to see you again first thing in the morning. Mm. Be sure he gets that next application in 15 minutes, Molly. Yes, Dr. Kildare. Yeah, I wish you had the mumps and I was treating you. I don't blame you, Doctor, but say la vie, say yes. la vie. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel this evening, Mr. Jackson? Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's much good going to come of all this, Dr. Kildare. I don't feel that way. These things take time. They're real riddles. You have to have patience. One man is allergic to wool. Another is allergic to a bit of pollen, or to a spice or some other seasoning. He may be allergic to an animal or to a blossom of some sort. It's a long hunt to narrow the world down until you find one man's enemy. But once you've found it, you can help him. But you'll have to have patience. And so will I. Okay. Where do we go from here? Uh, what kind of shaving lotion do you use? Normally, I use a special prescription. I got it from a doctor in Iowa. He said it'd be easier on my skin. May I take a little of it? I'd like to have it analyzed. Sure you can, but I haven't any of it here. You'll have to ask my wife to bring some over. What have you been using here? Well, the hospital brought some up. It's there on the dressing. No. I think I'll take that along, too. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Jackson. Maybe I'll have something more encouraging to tell you then. Yeah, say, Doc, if my wife brings the lotion over, I... I... I'd kind of like to see her. She's willing to see me. Willing? All she's been waiting for is word that you want to see her. I do want to see her. Very much. All right. I'll have her bring over the lotion, and you can see her for a few minutes this evening. Thanks, Dr. Hildare. I, uh, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> Hello, laboratory. This is Dr. Kildare. I want tests made immediately on two types of shaving lotion I'm sending down to you. That's right. Let me know as soon as you can, will you? Thanks. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Glad to see that you're coming along so nicely. Oh, good morning yourself. Now why do you come in here to inflict on my poor, helpless body? Would you prefer that I went away? Oh, I certainly would. All right, I'll go. Just wanted to tell you that I think I've isolated Jackson's allergy, but... Oh, come here, come here, come back here. 
What is it? No, I think he's allergic to orris root. Orris root? Yes. Mm. He had a prescription shaving lotion that didn't use orris. But the lotion he was using here at the hospital did contain it. Mm. As I told you, his condition has been worse since he's been in the hospital. I've given orders now that he's not to use anything containing orris root. So we'll watch and see what happens. Well, I certainly hope you're on the right track. When do you intend to let me up, by the way? My temperature is down and the swelling's going down. Well, I'll let you know. How's your pancreas? Oh, mind your own pancreas. Shall I conduct an examination, or do you care to tell me? My pancreas is all right. Scout on it. Scout on it. Now, leave me alone. All right. Oh, oh, yes. Here, brought you a nice iron tonic you can start taking today. Iron tonic. I don't need an iron tonic. By your own hand, it is written. Quote, an iron tonic should be given patient during convalescence. Unquote. Ah, all right. Leave it on the table. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take anything. Now go back to your orris root and give me a chance to convalesce, will you? Well, Mr. Jackson, it's good to see you on your feet again. Isn't it? I don't mind telling you, I feel like the beginning of a new man. I can't get over the fact that I was the cause of Warren's illness. It wasn't you, Mrs. Jackson. It was the perfume you used. It contained a great quantity of orris. Warren gave me the perfume as a wedding present. (laughs) I certainly didn't know what I was doing. Uh, How long will you be treating him, Dr. Kildare? Well, he'll have to come in quite regularly for shots for a while. We're giving him orris hypodermically now in very small doses, which will gradually increase. Until we build up an immunity, he'll be able to lead a normal life. Well, I certainly thank you, Dr. Kildare. You've made a great difference in the world as far as I'm concerned. I'm glad to hear that. Dr. Gillespie. Hello, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, This is my first day up, too. But I didn't want you to leave the hospital without my having a chance to see you and wish you well. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. You'll be seeing a lot of me. I have to come back for shots. Here, now, sit down, Dr. Gillespie. Don't overdo things. Still under doctor's orders, you know. Uh, Careful. Remember, you're among patients. Well... We'd better be going. Thank you both again. Yes, thank you for saving my life, Dr. Glassby. And thank you, Dr. Kildare, for making it worthwhile. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. So it was Horace Root. Yeah. You don't have to look so smug about it. Strange, isn't it? How a little thing like an allergy can have such a depressing effect on a man that it can drive him to suicide. Oh, I don't think it's so strange. Don't think it's strange at all. I'm getting more and more allergic to you every day. Mm. Well, I think you should be back in bed. Been up just about long enough for your first day. You know, you have all the makings of a first-class bully. I shouldn't be a bit surprised. You see, I was taught by one of the greatest bullies in the world... Mm. Dr. Leonard Gillespie himself. Ah, oh, splash. And double splash. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Come in. Oh, Dr. Gillespie. Come in, come in. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine, fine. How do you feel? Oh, I I feel all right. You sound a little hoarse to me. Oh, my. Slight sore throat, but no, nothing serious. Well, well, suppose we just take your temperature and find out. Now, look here. I've had the mumps. Well, son, I got some news for you. Unless I'm not the diagnostician I think I am, you are about to have the mumps again. Ah, it's impossible. I looked up your record. You had them when you were ten years old, 
And it is recorded in your very own handwriting that you only had them on one side. Ah, oh, no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So open the mouth. Yes, yes. We'll put the thermometer under the tongue. Oh, there's no justice. Absolutely no justice. The thermometer justice. Up under the tongue. Under the... That's right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? An old adage, Doctor. An old, old adage. He laughs best who laughs last. <laughs> Dr. Kildare, you are hereby and officially ordered to bed. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 